So good evening, everyone. I hope uh, my voice is audible to you. Yes, sir. Good evening. So we'll get started with our first class today. We'll just give another minute or two for any other students who are willing to join the class. Okay. Otherwise, we are going to begin in one or two minutes with today's topic. Excuse me. So did you guys get a chance to see? I posted one uh, document, a handout, like a type of questions that uh, we are going to go through today and the topics, like kind of an overview of the topics that we are going to go through today. Did you get a chance to see that, any of you? If so, just a message. Yes, yes. okay, that is Yash, okay, great. Uh, uh, what about you, Pavitra and Shiva? Sir, no, sir, it's not displaying. It's not displaying? Uh, okay, Yash, how did you find out? Did you get a message about that? No, sir. No, sir, on the dashboard, it is. it was seen. It is currently, it was seen. It is seen. Yeah. On the course page this morning, uh, I have added, I think, around 9 o'clock or so, I added two documents. One document talking about the, uh, the overall idea and what type of questions you can ask today, what type of questions that we are trying to understand. And second one is a textbook chapter, about 15 pages from a textbook, Stein and Rowe textbook. Okay, where I have picked up, because that is for biological anthropology, they have a brief uh, you know, discussion on the basics that we need to learn. Okay, right. If you have not seen it, that's all right. Uh, you can actually access it even after the class and go through it to see where we are today. Okay, if you have access to it, open it, open the file and keep it with you. Otherwise, anyway, I'm going to show you my uh, my screen will show you that. Okay, we can you can even follow what we are discussing based on that. Okay. Yes, sir. Sir, actually, video is not video is not uh, appearing, sir. Oh yeah, yes, 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 yeah, yes, yeah. I I will turn on the video just in a minute. Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> okay, let's begin with our class. Okay, I'm going to show you the uh, this the document I was talking to you today that I've posted. Okay, on the course page. Okay. So if you have not figured out how to do it, as I said, um, 
under physical anthropology in the courses you will notice that under physical anthropology two files were uploaded okay might be able to show you it, my screen may look different to you so in case if you have difficulty i'll i'll show you how to access that like you probably have seen other files posted under other classes of anthropology okay like uh, yesterday's class of anthropology so two files physical anthro introduction and cell dna should show up so i'm sharing the screen so you will see it okay if you see uh, this page may not look exactly like this on your screen but under physical anthropology two files were actually uploaded this morning one physical anthropology introduction and cell and dna another one cell cell division dna reading material this is taken from a textbook this is a textbook chapter uh, this is for your reading resource okay right so don't worry now we'll uh, i will show you the exact uh, page you need for this Okay. So if you are not able to see my screen for any reason, okay, um, let me know. Okay. So right. So I think we already had this discussion. So I'm not going to go over. If I had. Uh, Uh, i just thought of in case if there are any new people will do that so we discussed what is anthropology right so have these questions in your mind we'll slowly figure out these concepts as we go on with our discussion like uh, as i was telling you this is about study of humans but it's a very broad discipline okay we talk about humans from all periods of time and all areas of the world and we try to in the process we try to answer some questions or anthropologists try to answer some questions what are they so they ask like what is it to be human okay like how you are connected to the, your surroundings and you know what are the different aspects that you hear about humans all these aspects are talked or discussed or studied by anthropologists and we also have this question that we always wondered for which we got some answers like how did we evolve okay so we have evolutionary theories that we are going to study we are going to answer some of these questions the theories of evolution we are going to have a dis have discussion on them and what is the nature of human kind so this is opening into many aspects like cultural aspects okay behavioral aspects many of those things you study as part of socio cultural anthropology okay why study anthropology so is something that i have mentioned here so what is the purpose of studying anthropology first of all i told you in the last class itself to feed curiosity about knowing ourselves we want to know more, more about us the curiosity is an integral component of human beings Okay, this kind of happened in evolution that we became curious. We want to know. We ask questions. Okay, this is a very inherent property of us. Okay, and also anthropology not only help us dig into these historical aspects of humans, but also it provides us a very useful data in very different fields, like medicine. Like we were talking in the last class, DNA fingerprinting, for example. And so, and environmental management. How do you deal with the environment? Like. many aspects how human you know living style or a lifestyle is causing damage to the environment what can be done where is the problem okay urban planning education in all these components the data we derive from anthropology studies is a very uh, very very much use okay so anthropology has so many dimensions to it and provides a profile of human potentials and limitations this provides us a good picture of what humans can do what we cannot do okay so there are many dimensions basically what we have to take here there are multiple dimensions to anthropology and some of them are practical in nature some of them are historical or theoretical in nature but when it comes to the topic that we are going to begin today that is physical and biological anthropology which is also very diverse and dynamic which used to be once called physical but now most aptly called biological anthropology because initially they were relying on physical components to determine so like skeletal systems morphological features 
But now there is more to that. We added now depth to the information that what we get in this anthropology. Okay, so here we are trying to understand now what is human DNA, how does it define various characteristics. So it became more than physical. So it is now aptly called biological anthropology. Okay, so these are the things that we study in physical anthropology. Basically, human biology plus evolution, you can say, is what gives rise to physical anthropology. Biology, we'll discuss beginning today. Medical sciences like anatomy, physiology, human growth and development, aging, nutrition, health, all these things are part of biology. But we only pick and choose in anthropology. We don't study all this in detail. There are a few aspects that we need to learn to understand these concepts of physical anthropology. So there are a few aspects, as you already saw the syllabus, in the syllabus, we see that some of these components are touched. We have, we don't have anatomy, we don't have physiology, few things we study about as part of human genetics. And then we have to go through the concepts of growth and development, aging. In applied anthropology, we talk about nutrition. And we also have epidemiological anthropology where we study about health, infections basically. Okay. And also evolution. So human and non-human. So primatology that we cover here. And then we talk about genetics, so DNA, how DNA contributed to the process of evolution, and then at molecular level, how evolution has taken place, and not only at the individual level, but studies on populations, like study about groups of people from various uh, geographical regions of the world. Okay, why do they look different? What, how, how DNA is defining their characteristics? So we try to connect the information to the very, very core concepts of, you know, uh, molecular biology. So where molecular biology refers to molecular study like DNA, proteins, those type of things. We got now technology advancements to understand, uh, you know, DNA, RNA and proteins as well. Okay. Along with that, with archaeology. So where we talk about in paleontology, we talk about fossils records. This is what we do in unit 1.6. What fossils talked about our ancestors. Plus archaeology. Archaeology, you uh, under the teacher will teach you this. So where we talk about different other aspects as well, cultural remains. What type of uh, you know evidences we found when we were, when we were digging for you know checking these type of fossils? They tell us about culture that was existing at that time. Okay, right. Also we have applied areas like genetic diagnosis. We'll talk about in unit 9.1, unit unit 9.4. Even partly in 9.5, we'll, uh, we'll talk about, uh, you know, genetic diagnosis, meaning how this information about DNA can be used to diagnose the problems in humans. Okay. And unit 12, we talk about forensic anthropology, applications of identifying a criminal based on certain features that human ha humans have. If let's say you found a dead body, which is 10, 15 years old, you can actually identify what caused the death. Were there any damages? So clear and a careful inspection will give you clues about this. So anthropology has a role in dealing with crimes. Okay. Similarly, anthropology of sports. What is the connection between, you know, human built, body built, muscle built, DNA, certain genes basically uh, in performance in sports. So there must be something, right? That is why anthropologists are interested in finding those connections. So that if not, you can design better sportsmen like that, but you can choose, you can pick them based on those characteristics. Okay. And designing of equipment, even to design equipment, you know, the measurements matter. How tall are we? You cannot build, let's say clothes. If you go to USA, you go to Europe, the clothes that are built for them may not fit very well to Indians, may not fit very well to Africans. So we have to have concept of, you know, set of standard measurements for people in different geographical areas. Based on that, you can design equipment, you can design clothes. So that, that also comes under anthropology. Anthropometry, we normally call, which will get introduced. Okay. So this is something just to give you a broad scope of what is physical anthropology, what comes under physical anthropology. I think what you can take here is this is huge, it is diverse. The many components that we study here. Okay. Right. Any point of time. So you can actually ask me questions. You don't have to just, uh, you know, uh, stay quiet like that. Anytime you have any question on it, you can interrupt the class, but given that we are a small number, so I don't mind you actually ask me questions. Okay. 
But if you are shy, uh, which I don't want you to be, you can type a question so I can actually see it. Okay, so both of us can get used to this platform where, uh, you know, we, we can uh, work together, learn together, okay, and understand the concepts, right. So any questions so far before we actually start with the topic today? Oh, great. <laughs> right. So let's keep this class a little bit more interactive. Okay. I'll ask you questions because one thing I want you to know, uh, I want uh, to know from you is how much you know about these things so that I can teach things that are more useful to you. Okay. So keep that in mind. So let's figure out the concepts and basics together. So right, so today I'm starting with unit 1.7. Why am I beginning with unit 1.7? Okay, so if you remember uh, from either if you have seen the video already on the syllabus or if you figured out the syllabus by yourself. I'm showing you now a different So in the syllabus, once you figure out, I hope you are able to see the PowerPoint slide here. Okay, once we get the idea about what, what is anthropology and what is the biological anthropology. So this you we anyway figure out. So we'll not spend too much of time on this, but just you know that this is one of the branches of anthropology. So this is what is the initial component. Unit, uh, like uh, units 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 it deals about meaning, scope and development of anthropology and relationships with other disciplines, social sciences, life sciences, medical sciences. This is studying detail, so you will figure it out. Okay, we don't have to discuss it in detail now, but uh, slowly you will figure it out because how is it connected to life sciences, biological sciences, medical sciences, okay? Physical anthropology part, you will see it. And also we'll see how it is connected to socio-cultural adaptations as well. So there is an overlap between pure biological topics in physical anthropology, also partly the social social sciences or social anthropology is connected to it, okay? I'll, I'll identify and tell you when we are talking about that. So otherwise human evolution is there in 1.4, okay? And then primatology and then fossils in 1.6. But I'm beginning with 1.7, why? Because 1.7 provides us a very basic picture, core foundation that is required to understand physical anthropology, okay? So biological, this is a syllabus. So we are talking about unit 1.7. This is exactly copied from the syllabus. So it says the biological basis of life. Okay, the cell, we need to know about the cell. We need to know about DNA structure and DNA replication, protein synthesis. We need to be aware about what is gene, what is mutation, what are chromosomes, what is cell division. Okay, this is what we are going to begin with today. We'll see, depending on how well you are able to absorb, we may not be able to finish all of it today, but we should be able to go through a lot of it in this class, okay? So I hope this is clear to you that one, why we started with 1.7. Once you understand these concepts, I slowly will talk to you about one evolution. So we are going to pick up concepts of evolution, okay, theories of evolution. So this is what actually had begun before, okay? But with the concepts of DNA, we will we'll be able to understand the picture of evolution a little better. So having this knowledge is very, very important even before discussing evolution. So once we finish talking about 1.7, we'll talk about evolution, and then we'll talk, talk about 9.2, Mendelian genetics, because this is how we evolved. This is how the knowledge in the field of physical anthropology also evolved. We figured out evolution simultaneously, we started figuring out how characteristics run in the families. So this comes under Mendelian genetics. So 9.2, we are going to deal with after 1.7, evolutionary theories, and we talk about 9.2. This is how we're going to begin. So we will connect the topics logically rather than just going by the same order. But every time I'll tell you what unit are we talking about, where are we, what concepts are we discussing, how much to study, from where to study, these questions will be answered in the class. Okay. So that at the end of the class, you should be familiar with the, with the topics that we are discussing. You should be comfortable through the connections made. Okay. But we need to read. That is why I gave you the reading material and I gave a brief summary outline about the class. Okay, that should help you if you somehow got lost in the class. 
but wherever you are uncomfortable where you have questions to ask a question open your mic disturb me and ask me a question wherever you are unsure about what i am talking about okay right hope it is making sense to you so let's begin discussing about the components in unit 1.7 okay so i'm going to switch between these two files the word document that i've shared with you and a powerpoint slide that i made to make it a little bit more visual so that you'll be able to understand carefully okay, my desktop shared so you'll see everything on my desktop right so i'm sure you have all have some idea about this you might have studied this uh, initially on this like uh, what is the fundamental unit of life okay what what is our body made up of what are we all all parts of our body animals you see around plants you see around they are all made up of what is called a cell right they are all made up of what is called cell so cell is the fundamental unit of life what does it mean it means that it is the physical component of all parts in our body for that matter animals and plants but we focus on humans given that we are talking about physical anthropology here every part of our body is made up of it you probably know cells are the tiniest part so that is why they are called fundamental units and they are both structural as well as fun as well as functional units okay both structural as well as functional units what do i mean by that so they are responsible for making the structures with tissues they are also responsible for making or allowing these tissues to function in that sense cell is both structural and functional okay because it provides all the means something that you can connect better here in examples like pancreas we know that pancreas is one particular part of our body what is the job of pancreas pancreas produces one of the known very well known job of pancreas is to release insulin and that insulin is responsible for controlling the sugar levels in the blood so pancreas is made up of cells and within pancreas we have cells that release a hormone called insulin and this insulin is responsible for controlling our blood glucose levels so do you see both structural and functional components here structure is the cells making up the pancreas function is the cells giving rise to the hormone which is controlling the body which is controlling an aspect of the body so like that cells are both fundamental units both structural and functional units of life okay right next we dig into this what is inside the cell so so far i told you cell is what makes up the organs cell is what makes up this fundamental unit so we know the hierarchy which we don't have to go through but just remember i refresh it briefly cells make up what cells make up the tissues Tube. tissues make up what organs. organs correct organs very good yash and organs make up what human body as well systems first of all we talk about organ systems meaning so let's say organs like heart correct heart is only one part of a bigger system that is called circulatory system heart is a pump which pumps the blood but we need blood vessels we need other other components along with the heart that all together comes into a system system like circulatory system digestive system respiratory system like that multiple systems what makes up the body correct so this is what we all already know okay so i'm trying to keep it as simple as possible i'm trying to build on what you already know so there is nothing too complicated that you don't know okay we begin with what is something that you know we add information to it. okay right so this is what basically briefly what is a cell right what's inside the cell what are the major components of the cell i left it blank here okay so you, whenever this type of uh, outlines are given to you and outs are given to you if possible print them or just download them and you write answers as we are learning information about it i left it so my question here is what are the major component in an animal cell okay as we learn about them you write them here and write briefly like a table right about them and remember one thing we have not seen questions coming from this unit okay so we're not going to discuss any questions here but this is a fundamental concept 
that we need to learn the other units like 9.1 okay and other 9.2 9.4 so we, this is a basic unit for that but no questions as such asked so don't worry about by hearting things only remember them only try to make connections only try to have an imagination about these things okay that is what we are expecting to other other units i'll tell you what questions have been asked so you can frame the information i provided in the class in the form of answers okay you can already connect to the information so we do that in a, after every unit or after finishing on that day's class what type of questions are given from that particular topic okay we'll discuss that so you are tuning to the exam right so we are going to first focus on this what are the major components of it and i'm going to talk to you about different organelles functions and nucleus briefly i'll walk you through these things okay so for that i will show you this image so what you are seeing on the screen is an animal cell okay a schematic picture of an animal cell so what do you see in an animal cell just have a look at this quick look at the animal cell okay what do you see what type of components you see it just spend few seconds to look around and read the names that are given on this so what do we see here this is like a kind of a closed structure what they have done like it's like they chopped it they cut it open so that we can see it but can we see the cell with our naked eyes is it visible to us human cells for example okay we won't be able to see it why yes yeah sugar answer they're so small they're so small they're microscopic they are on the scale of micrometers micro is how much in a meter 10 power 1 minus 10 power minus 6 okay micro is 10 power minus 6 okay it is 1 thousandth of a millimeter so you take a millimeter divide them into 1000 parts the cell is approximately in that range okay bacterial cell for example around 1 micrometer our cells are slightly bigger but still in the micrometer scale that is why we need microscopes to see them so this picture that we these drawn after gaining understanding about what's inside this micrometer scale cells they are so tiny okay inside these cells we have many components so before getting to the components you see kind of we have a cover around the cell in animal cells what is the outer layer of the cell this is cell membrane this is cell membrane outer layer of the cell is cell membrane okay so cell membrane this portion so this cell membrane kind of covers all the organelles inside the cell okay thereby providing protection and a definite shape to the cell correct so we are familiar about that so inside this inside the cell membrane you will see some sort of fluid and this fluid is known as cytoplasm this fluid is known as cytoplasm so what is cytoplasm it's a fluid in which many components like organelles are floating around so inside the cell membrane we have cytoplasm fluid like you know part and then inside them we have many components and the most important one that we are interested in is nucleus we are interested in nucleus so more or less at the center of the cell that we have nucleus so what is the importance of nucleus this is where our genetic material is stored this is where our genetic material is stored so what is the genetic material the key genetic material in us is dna dna deoxyribo nucleic acid or dna in short we call it okay right this is a core component we'll spend more time on this dna but first of all let's recognize the other organelles in the cell in addition to the nucleus at the center inside the cell we have many organelles so what is an organelle before we talked about an organ correct organ is a big structure which is responsible for performing a particular function like heart pumping the blood lungs you know collecting oxygen sending out carbon dioxide right 
Similarly, we have inside the cells, we have small components which are responsible for certain functions. They're called organelles. So it's like organ, organelle. Organelle is a bigger portion, organelle is a smaller portion. So those organelles that you see here, like mitochondria, you see what is called endoplasmic reticulum, ER in short we call, endoplasmic reticulum or ER we call it. We have lysosomes, we have Golgi. Golgi is another organelle that we find inside our cells, Golgi apparatus. In addition to that, we have some other things which are not organelles. Ribosome is not an organelle, but plays a very, very important role in the function of the cell. Okay, so these are all various components you find in the cell. Why do we have them? Why do we have these type of components inside our cell? What are they doing? What type of functions are they performing? Let's ask this question, question, okay? I'll get into the details later about nucleus, but let's just briefly tell me about a little bit about nucleus. So I already told you nucleus is something that stores, encloses DNA in it, okay? DNA is, is a molecule where instructions about life are written. So this is where instructions about how your nose should look like, what is your body's color, how should your hair look like, all these characteristics are written inside the DNA. And this very valuable instruction are stored inside or enclosed inside the nucleus. Okay, so we'll dig more into that. But outside the nucleus, as immediately attached to the nucleus, you will find endoplasmic reticulum. So what is the role of endoplasmic reticulum? So let's gradually figure it out from the connection with what's inside the nucleus. So DNA, I already told you, DNA is a storage molecule for instructions, correct? But the thing with DNA is DNA always sits inside the nucleus. These instructions are always safely stored inside the nucleus. But how does our body run if instructions are stored somewhere, but body needs to work based on those instructions? Then how does this communication goes? So inside the nucleus, the DNA will be used to copy a molecule called RNA. RNA, RNA is like a sister of DNA. So what happens, you make a copy of the DNA. We are going to study this in protein synthesis. For now, just briefly know what I'm talking about. We'll get into the details soon. So from DNA, a copy of information is made in the form of what is called RNA. So this RNA is made where? Inside the nucleus. And this RNA will leave the nucleus and come out of the nucleus. In search of what? In search of endoplasmic reticulum. So a copy of information from the nucleus comes out, okay, in search of endoplasmic reticulum. This is where the function of endoplasmic reticulum begin. So what is it? On top of endoplasmic reticulum, do you see these dots on ER? Do you find these dots? Do you know what are those dots? Can someone tell me what are those dots? What are these dotted structure you are seeing on ER? Any one of you who knows the answer, you can answer. Open your mic and answer it. So these are nothing but ribosomes. So these dotted structures are nothing but ribosomes. You know what is the function of ribosome? So ribosome sits on the endoplasmic reticulum or sometimes it is floating around. So ribosome is what you know encounters or receives the RNA that is coming from the nucleus. This is one particular type of RNA called messenger RNA or we call it mRNA. Messenger RNA or mRNA we call it. Messenger RNA or mRNA, we call it. Okay. So we call it messenger RNA or mRNA. So this mRNA, what is read by ribosomes, and then it converts this message, message into proteins. Because DNA is just a matter of storing the components, but we need something to work in the cell. That workable component is protein. So from mRNA, protein is made. From mRNA, protein is made. By whom? By ribosomes. And where are these ribosomes present? They're present usually on the endoplasmic reticulum. So what is the function of endoplasmic reticulum then? One function that we talked about now 
is synthesis of these proteins. It is the synthesis of these proteins. Okay, right. So what else is that the job of endoplasmic reticulum? Endoplasmic reticulum does more than this. So endoplasmic reticulum is also responsible for synthesizing lipids. Okay, not only proteins, lipids are made by it. Especially we have another part of endoplasmic reticulum called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So where smooth means it doesn't look rough. Okay, so something that looks rough is rough endoplasmic. Something that doesn't have ribosomes on it is known as smooth ER. And this is the part of the endoplasmic reticulum that makes up the, uh, that synthesizes lipids. So you can imagine endoplasmic reticulum as a manufacturing unit of the cell. Okay, hope this is making sense to you. Instructions are sitting in the nucleus and then instructions in the, in the form of mRNA comes out of the nucleus. We get a copy, it's like a Xerox copy comes out of the nucleus because original copy never comes out of the nucleus. So what you get outside is Xerox. The Xerox copy carrying genetic information is mRNA. When it comes out, it cannot be used as it is. So we need to translate it. And here, translators are ribosomes. So ribosome translates the information. How does it translate? It translates it from information present in the form of DNA into in the form of proteins. That is why it's called a translation. Okay. So we are deriving information from the instruction sitting in the nucleus. That is the job of endoplasmic reticulum, especially ribosomes that are present on the endoplasmic reticulum. Like that, information is read, proteins are created, not only proteins, lipids are created by this endoplasmic reticulum. Then what happens? So this is all manufacturing has been done. But this protein, is it functional as it is? As it is synthesized, do you think the protein that is made out of this genetic information, is it functional? So mute yourself, unless you are asking a question, mute yourself because we hear some background noise. When you're asking a question, unmute and ask a question. Okay, right, thank you. So, proteins are made here, but proteins are as such not right away functional. So what has to happen here? The proteins have to go through some amount of processing, some amount of molding. Where does that happen? That can also happen again in the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, that can happen in the endoplasmic reticulum or that can also happen in the Golgi. Golgi is what you are seeing here next. Golgi. So what is the role of Golgi? Golgi has, we are moving from now ER to Golgi. So I'm giving a brief overview on each organelles. See the connections. If you're making running notes, write like a flowchart with the connections to each. And I'm connecting to each organelle where possible. So we learned about briefly nucleus. We, are, we learned about endoplasmic reticulum. Now we are moving on to Golgi apparatus. Okay, what does, what does Golgi do? Golgi is dealing with the proteins that are produced here, lipids that are producing produced here. What does it do? One, it packs them, it stores them because it is present close to the manufacturing unit. So in a very general sense, let's say you have a manufacturing business, you manufacture something, right? But do we sell those components or products in the manufacturing unit itself or do they go to market? They have to be sent to the market, correct? How do they go to the market? We need a transport system to go to the market, correct? To send it to the market. So Golgi is seen as a transport system. Golgi is seen as a transport system. What does it do? It carries its proteins. It carries lipids produced at endoplasmic reticulum to the target sites. So what are the target sites? Where does it go? The target sites may be lipids. For example, I was briefly telling you about cell membrane. Our cell is covered with cell membrane. You know, cell membrane is made up of lipids. Where do the lipids come from? Cell itself makes the lipids. So lipids made here in the endoplasmic reticulum will be carried by Golgi. You see it here in the image. Golgi is dropping a lipid. A new membrane is made here. Our membrane is being maintained here. And the lipid is coming from inside the cell itself. Okay, so the role of Golgi is to carry, transport lipids, transport proteins. There are also proteins here and there on this. And these proteins are incorporated in the membranes. Okay, and where are those proteins made? Inside the cell. Using what? Instructions in the DNA. 
so like that you make and you maintain the cell by through the certain activities that happen inside the cell all these organelles contribute to that so this is about golgi okay just a brief idea is sufficient for you okay make one sentence of information or a flow chart you don't need to read much more than this i have provided in the reading reference i have provided some additional re reading sources if you want to know more you are curious to know more i have provided some more reading and those links are provided they are free you just click them you will get them content to read but if you just for now for this unit if you just focus and make notes on what i'm ex explaining it to you that is sufficient you don't need to dig much more in detail for few things like dna replication protein synthesis i'm going to give you a summary of the information that i'm talking to you today so from there you can read it and that is enough okay we don't have to do much more just focus on knowing things understanding things here okay not too much of burden on you from this unit okay next so we talked about these endoplasmic reticulum and golgi now what happens one important thing that you see here lot of activities happening inside the cell correct and what do you need to run machines what do you need these type of activities to happen we need energy correct where does energy come from what is that organelle inside our cell i'm sure all of you are familiar about which is responsible for generating energy mitochondria exactly yes it is mitochondria mitochondria is called as power house of the cell mitochondria is known as power house of the cell this mitochondria is known as power house of the cell what does it do it produces some molecules called atp it produces what is called atp okay it produces what is called atp so atp is form of energy that we we prefer to use inside our cell atp it's a name of a chemical okay we call it adenosine triphosphate don't have to remember do not don't have to by heart just to know it adenosine triphosphate or simply atp so mitochondrial job is to produce that atp and all these events protein synthesis and the maintenance of dna inside transport they utilize atp so you eat atp you get energy it's like playing a video game you consume atp you get energized so atp provide that en provides that energy to the various components in the cell to perform to perform different activities okay that is why mitochondria is called power of the cell this is the job of the mitochondria i'll tell you a little bit more about mitochondria in anthropology we need to know more about mitochondria because the, there is amount of some amount of dna present in mitochondria i'll talk to you this little later once we get into the more details okay so we'll come back to the mitochondria to learn a little bit different information than what we talked about that is of a little bit more relevance to the anthropological studies okay for now for basics this is enough that mitochondria acting like a power house of the cell because it generates atp and what does atp do atp's job is to give us energy so that various aspects of activities are taking place inside the body right anything else any other organelle that is present on this slide that we have not talked about is there any organelle that we have not discussed about here that you see okay if you identify any organelle which we have not talked about just speak up and tell me what is the organelle i am mentioning here you understand my question do you see any organelle that we have not talked about so far which is given on this slide lysosome correct lysosome so any idea what is lysosome doing yes sir so can you figure out biology is about terminology okay when if you understand terms we can guess few things what do you guess from the term lysosome lyso so soma means body okay soma refers to body lyso means lysis lysis means breaking down things so lysosome is one such an organelle inside our cell whose job is to break down things okay so they basically destroy the things but what type of things does it destroy is it damaging our cell no lysosome is playing a big role when t 
things are coming from outside let's say bacteria got into your cell lysosome can eat up bacteria break them into pieces throw them so it is protecting our body from that this is one function of lysosome excuse me Sen second one let's say your cell somehow got damaged you got too much exposed to the sun to the uv light let's say or you got too much exposed to the uh, some sort of uh, you know damaging agents chemicals let's say cell got damaged do we maintain those cells like that as it is in the damaged form we don't what do we have to do we have to kill that cell remove that cell otherwise it is burden to our body and it may be interfering in the normal functioning of the body so what do we what does lysosomes do lysosome actually has certain enzymes which have capability to eat up things so what does lysosome does lysosome opens up releasing all those enzymes so those enzymes eat up various parts of the cell thereby eating up the cell thereby destroying the cell so that is why lysosome is called suicidal bag of cells suicidal bag meaning it is destroying its own cell it is killing itself why because there is so much of damage there is no point in continuing with that cell so damage that damage has to be tackled by destroying it so that is also the job of lysosomes that is why it's called lysosome body cell body which is responsible for lysis okay hope that's clear these are the key organelles that we need to know we don't need to know much more than this there are other things like cytoskeletal elements okay i'm going to slowly point out to those elements when we talk about cell division but for now this is sufficient sir uh, just a yes. question go ahead uh, sir uh, sir does it kill viruses also lysosome or does it kill only bacteria as far as our knowledge goes lysosome has certain enzymes called lysozymes and lysozyme scientifically known to kill bacteria okay because viruses don't have that cell wall that bacteria has and lysozyme which is an enzyme present in lysosome kills or chops that membrane and if there is no membrane like cell wall in virus there is nothing to kill by lysozymes so normally lysosomes are responsible for killing bacteria enzymes are made for that we have different mechanisms to kill viruses like in our immune system just to specifically tell you we'll briefly talk about this in immunogenetics in coming classes in unit 9.1 i will briefly talk to you about um immune system function and in that we'll discuss about the particular aspect of killing viruses we have certain chemicals that our cells release inside the body they have ability to kill the viruses they have ability to kill the cell with the viruses but yeah. as such as far as our knowledge goes lysosomes are good for bacteria and and sir the food we eat does the lysosome play any role in that i mean breaking down the food uh, not so much uh, not at the level of the macro level see what happens in our digestion process you eat the food food goes through the various parts of the body like stomach it goes through and the digestive system small intestine mostly where digestion happens there are cells which are contributing to this process but not at the scale where we need lysosome to break it down okay so here yeah. we have like it's like a bag in the small intestine we release certain hormones certain enzymes they go and kill maybe it might have some enzymes that come from the lysosome but not as such that we we learn with respect to the digestion process okay it has mostly to do with the protection layer it is acting like a protection layer for the cell mostly okay, okay so there are other enzymes other hormones we take the help of for completing the digestion process in the digestive system okay where again cells are playing the role again cells like this mitochondria from the cells providing energy for the cells to act or producing enzymes all this is happening so cells are contributing to this process but directly if lysosome contributing any enzymes these of doubt okay okay sir right so this is a brief idea about the cell what is cell what is it made up of what all the various organelles present in the cell okay just a brief idea with connections are the connections clear to you because i try to make sense of these things by connecting to each other why we need nucleus why we need endoplasmic reticulum why we need golgi what is the role of ribosomes what is the role of lysosomes mitochondria so i'm going to give you some questions this is like this is what i'm planning to do after every class or after a couple of classes i'll give you some questions for you to answer these are uh, mcqs so where this is just for revising what we discussed in the class like question can be like this hey, where is dna stored inside the nucleus Okay, what is the copy of molecule that is made from the DNA to allow the proteins to be made from it? 
So I can ask these type of questions. This is basically revising what you learned from these classes. Okay, those type of questions will be posted. So uh, there you can actually, I'll give you an assignment on this. Very simple. You just have to answer the questions based on what we learned in the class. Okay, so that you can revise and remember things. And wherever you had a problem from your scores, I know that you had difficulty in understanding a concept. So that helps me to emphasize more on some of the topics. Okay, this is for my review, also for your review. Right. This is briefly about what we need to know about the cell structure. Okay, right. So next, where do we move? So we are guided by this document I was telling you about. So we finished talking about major components of animal cells. So you will write answers here about those organelles and briefly what are their functions. So the summary is helpful to you. So organelles and their functions. Next, we are going to next focus on the nucleus. Here, I'm going to talk to you briefly about, because we are mostly interested in how instructions are stored, in what form. So let's dig into the details about what's inside the nucleus, what is it, what is the DNA made up of, what is the connection between chromosomes, genes, and DNA. Are they, are they same as what we are learning here? Okay, we are going to talk about that. So, Inside the cell, this is a slightly different view of the cell. This is slightly different view of the cell. So here we are seeing the nucleus. Inside the cell, I told you towards the center, we have nucleus, okay? So nucleus is covered by a membrane. Simply it is called nuclear membrane. You don't need to know all these um, terms. Just focus on what I'm suggesting you here. Nuclear membrane. So there are two layers. That's why they said outer membrane, inner membrane. Don't worry. Our nucleus is also enclosed by membrane. That is why it is called an organelle. Organelle should have a membrane. And nucleus, is, I, I mentioned to you, nucleus is an organelle. So it is covered by a membrane. On the membrane, you see some holes. These are called nuclear pores. So if it is completely closed, nothing can move in and out. But I told you, mRNA made inside the nucleus has to come out. So there must be a pore for allowing mRNA to come out. So these pores are called nuclear pores. So mRNA comes through the pores. And proteins go inside. You will see the role of proteins in DNA maintenance. They go through these pores into the nucleus. So these pores are called nuclear pores. Okay, right. So inside it, what you will find, you will find this thread-like structures inside the nucleus. What are these thread-like structures? These threads are called chromatin material. This is called chromatin material. This is called chromatin material. It's like a thread of DNA. So it is nothing but thread of DNA. So DNA is present in the form of a thread inside our nucleus and that is known as chromatin. Chroma means color. Meaning scientists, when they discovered it, it takes up some colors. In biology, we use stains. We put a color, some parts of the cell takes color, some parts don't take color. So it looks colorful when you stain it, when you add the color to it, that is what's called chroma, chromatin. Okay. So in addition to that, you will see what is called nucleolus. Inside the nucleus, if you see, if this is nucleus, you will see some small portion called nucleolus. No boundary as such, but it is packed with some molecules. This is where RNAs are usually made. RNA is made here. This is a lot of activity in making RNA, not just messenger RNA I was telling you. Even to make up ribosomes, we need RNA because ribosomes are mostly made up of RNA and those RNAs are made inside the nucleus. So all RNAs inside our cell are made in the nucleus, except a few in the mitochondria. Otherwise, they're all made in the nucleus. So where are they made? They are made in the region of nucleus. So this is where all the preparation towards even making ribosomes happen. So there is one particular part in the nucleus called nucleolus. Anything else that we can see here? Okay, so nothing much. So I'm just recapping what we discussed so far. Nucleus is at the center of the cell. And the nucleus is a, an organelle, meaning it is covered by a membrane. Okay. 
it is covered by a membrane this membrane is called a nuclear membrane inside the nucleus you will find the thread like structure called chromatin so chromatin is nothing but the dna molecules it is nothing but the dna threads so and in addition in the nucleus we have what is called a nucleolus what is the role of nucleolus nucleolus is where different forms of rna are made especially rna for making up the ribosome which is mainly made up of rna is made near in the nucleus in the nucleolus region particular region called nucleolus okay now let's see let's dig into the chromatin what's inside the chromatin what is a chromosome what is chromatin what is dna let's now figure out the so we are digging deep now we dive dived into the nucleus now we are diving or expanding the this chromatin structure what is chromatin what is dna what is a link okay this is what we are mostly interested in here okay so i'm sure you probably all have an idea about a chromosome so chromosome is like this x like structure you see here this x like structure you notice here so this is what is called a chromosome and the chromatin you have seen in the previous image is what makes up the chromosome you see this this thread that i was talking to you i was showing you as chromatin before it is this thread which is compacted which is put together which is condensed to give rise to chromosome so what is a chromosome just make a note of it chromosome is the condensed form of chromatin chromosome is the condensed form of chromatin it is a very compact form it's like you take a thread and nicely tight and make a very compact structure it's like you take your phone charger mobile charger and nicely organize it instead of it being spread it out so it is for mainly for organizing the dna into a very small region i'll tell you when chromosomes are made when this chromosome structures actually appear in few minutes i'll tell you that but for now remember inside the cells inside the nucleus we have chromosome structures only during certain situations what are they made up of they are made up of chromatin otherwise i told you inside this we normally have this thread like structure this thread sometimes undergoes condensation to form chromosomes so chromatin chromosomes are connected to each other they are just different forms of organization of genetic material chromatin chromosome and what is chromatin made up of i told you this chromatin is made up of dna so you see this if you open up this chromatin the thread structure i was talking to you about you open up this is what gives rise to dna this is our dna this is a dna so we have this at the very basic level dna which is like a double helical structure it's like two strands going together like a helix like a spiral okay they are like turned around each other so this is what is the thread so the thread that we have seen here is nothing but dna thread but it is again compacted by using some proteins you see this ball like structures there are some proteins specifically called histones so these are some proteins you don't have to remember these names just know them uh, i don't think anywhere uh, in our discussion anywhere in the anthropology will come across histone again so unless you need them i will not emphasize too much just to you know the connections but don't have to by heart so what i'm trying to tell you histones these proteins what wraps the this genetic material so basically you take that structure you tie around like that you see that around many such proteins they are they are acting like anchors base around which you are tying this thread okay and these threads as well again you put them together you again condense these together so you wound them around so that this chromosome like a very very compact structures very dense structures are formed so this is how dna is organized inside our bodies most of the times it is sitting as chromatin little bit loose which is again made up of dna sometimes it is very condensed to give rise to chromosomes when does that happen i leave it as a question to you we'll figure it out but this is how dna is organized inside the nucleus this is how it is organized inside the nucleus okay now let's get into the details about what's in the inside the dna what is dna made up of what is dna made up of 
So start with this. This is what the structure we have seen in the previous image. We have this helical structure of the DNA. I told you these are two such strands we notice here. Okay. So you see one strand here and one strand here. Two strands you notice here. Yes, sir. These two strands come together. They are spiraled around each other. That is what's called helical structure. This is how it sits inside the body. This is what scientists found that it is not straightened. It is actually helical. It goes around each other. And in these classes, we don't have to get into the details about why it is helical. If you are curious, you can ask me questions after the class. I'll try to explain that to you. For now, for the level of understanding we need, I only focus to that depth. So it is helical like that. It is like a spiral. But if you stretch it out for our understanding, this is how it normally exists. But for our own understanding, you stretch it out. You see this stretching structure here. It's like a ladder. It's like a ladder, right? You see the ladder here. So we have one strand here, strand one, and strand two here. Okay, this is made up of some chemical structures. So so far we are just talking about very superficial about DNA. We talked about DNA is like a thread. DNA is like a helical structure. But what is it made up of? It is made up of four letters. Okay, see it here: adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. It is made up of these four letters. What are these four letters called? They are known as nucleotides. So the building block of building blocks of DNA is nucleotides. So this is a block. You see one block here. This is one block. This is called a nucleotide. This is called a nucleotide. This each nucleotide is made out of one of these four. So it's like in English, how many alphabets we have? We have about 20, 26 letters in English, right? But inside our DNA, all the instructions are written using only four letters, only four alphabets. What are they? Adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, A, T, G, Cs. Okay, so adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine are the four chemicals that make up the DNA. But in addition to these ATGCs, we need some other structures. So let's now see how ATGCs are connected to nucleotides. How are they connected to nucleotides? Okay, so here we only see the letters, but in addition to the letters, let's say from this structure, we have seen the G here, right? So G is one part, one nucleotide. This G is connected to T. T is connected to G. G is connected to C. You see the connections here? Like that, this thread is made. Okay. We'll focus on one side of the thread now, either right or left, whatever it is. Okay. So G, T, G, C, you are seeing here. This G is connected to T, T connected to G. But G is only one part of nucleotide. So within this structure, they're actually not one, but three parts. What are they? So one, let's say in the G, this is one part. G is one part. What is the second part? You see something like an arrow mark here. This part you see here. Yeah. So this is actually this component that we notice here is called a base. Okay. So G is a type of base. I'm going to type it here. So what you see here is a base. So ATGCs are known as bases. So one is base and another one we have what is called sugar attached to it, sugar. What is sugar? So this part you see here. This part you see here, okay? This portion is sugar. So second part is sugar. What is the third part? Third part we have what is called phosphate. Phosphate. Phosphate is nothing but phosphorus with oxygen. So these are some chemical structures. Okay, we don't have to get into the details, but I'll show you if you are interested how this whole structure looks like. Okay, don't have to buy hard, don't get scared because biology is sometimes a little complex. This is only to give a very good picture about DNA. So what are we seeing here? Three parts. One is base. So base is like ATGCs. Another one is sugar. So base is connected to sugar. Okay, this is sugar, one chemical structure like this. So base is a chemical structure. Sugar is a chemical structure. And then 
we have phosphate this is phosphate p oxygen and phosphorus they are all connected to each other you see it there are some chemical bonds again which you don't have to by heart this base is attached to sugar using a particular chemical bond sugar to base bond this is glycosidic bond we call and this sugar is also attached to the phosphate some through something called ester bond so these are all chemicals right they are bonded to each other through some chemical bondings so this is like gluing them but particular type of glue so this is one structure this is this is called nucleotide so what is nucleotide made up of you just need to write like write that this nucleotide equal to base plus sugar plus phosphate so nucleotide what is making up the dna and each nucleotide contains base sugar and phosphate base sugar and phosphate okay that is what we are seeing here this single g that you are seeing in this whole structure is nothing but a base a sugar a phosphate like that one nucleotide is made like that several nucleotides are there this is one nucleotide this component is one nucleotide this is second nucleotide third nucleotide that is what we are seeing here nucleotide 1 nucleotide 2 nucleotide 3 they are attached to each other their chemical structures so what is dna made up of remember this dna is made up of nucleotides what is nucleotides made up of nucleotides are made up of three parts what are they base sugar phosphate so this is how a chain of dna is made by attaching nucleotides like that how many different types of nucleotides you find all nucleotides contain same phosphate same sugar but the difference lies in the form of base so either nucleotides are of a type t type g type or c type that is why you see it here the only way we have written this information is atgcs so first here there is g second there is t like that so like that dna is made from these chemical structures called nucleotides okay is it clear to you so each strand is made like that through nucleotides um, sir just a question yes go ahead uh, sir before g there is a c so this is also a nuclear nucleotide no this one right yes sir yeah you just uh, i was telling you to focus on one of this strand next one next i'm explaining okay. about this connection okay okay you are absolutely Sorry. right but we are first learning about one one side of the strand i just okay. talked about one side of the strand now we'll see how is the second strand connected to this okay second strand you see it, this, this is nothing but the more or less the same same structure that we have seen here instead of g there is a here c here instead of t there is a here but you see one pattern inside this if there is only one particular type of pairing you see what is that pairing you see wherever g this is one strand right wherever there is a g on the opposite strand because we have two strands that come together here right so one strand we figured out second strand is also made up of nucleotides but there is some pattern of bringing together the nucleotides what is that pattern wherever there is a g on the opposite side you see c wherever there is a on the opposite side you see t is that true for everything here everywhere you find g on the opposite side you have c here we have g here we have c g here c here same thing with a with t a with t a with t so meaning there is certain rule for them to come together so whenever there is a g on the opposite side you will see c so g pairs with c g nucleotide or base g guanine always pairs with cytosine and base thymine always pairs with adenine so this is called base pairing rule what is called base pairing so each of these individual nucleotide is called base but in the dna we have two strands so we have not just a simple base but we have a base pair because there are two strands it has to exist in the form of pairs if there is a g here there is a c here that is what's called base pairs when when they ask you about the length of the dna the units for the length of the dna is base pair because base is the unit for this and pair because there are not one but a pair of these bases that is called a base pair so like that there is a complementarity meaning if there is a g here there will be c there so this is called base pairing rule this is a standard okay so we can derive this information for practical purposes later 
in diagnostics. Okay, that is why you will understand why we need to know this. When I teach you other classes in uh, 9.1 human genetics, in some examples, I'll ask you to remember this. Okay, there you need this information. So have this concept fixed in your head. G pairs with C, A pairs with T. We have two strands. In one strand we have G, other strand there will be C. So there's a pairing rule. Always G pairs with C, A pairs with T, and vice versa. Okay, this is a standard. That's how these two strands of DNA are made. Okay, simple. Actually, concept is very, very simple. Looks a little complex because of the structures, but otherwise only four letters in DNA, and uh, this letter is part of a nucleotide. So each nucleotide joins with another nucleotide, thereby forming a chain. There are two chains which come together, exist together. Okay, so that is why it's called double helical structure, and each of them are made up of. They only differ in terms of adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosines. So reading this. what gives rise to dna sequence you call dna sequencing information uh, dna technology in medicine dna sequencing we talk about so dna sequence is nothing but knowing these letters you pick up a dna see whether g is present t is present this order is very very important it's like in english you have 26 alphabets but when you write sentences you use them in particular order let's say you want to write uh, digest digestion what do you do t i g you write you put the letters together in certain order if you only write letters together like digest it gives you some meaning this is the same story with the dna if you put gtg ctg like this it gives rise to a particular type of protein particular type of protein gives rise to particular type of character so the order of letters are very very important to put into the context of nowadays we talk about covid 19 so covid 19 is a virus within that they also have genetic material so they they actually sequence is letters to know the covid 19 that is causing the problem let's say in india is it same as the one causing the problem in china same as the one causing problem in usa they can read the letters and they know because if they know instructions they know if their behavior is same is it causing more serious problem more serious signs symptoms in us compared to india there must be something to do with the dna their genetic material because they don't have dna they have rna but genetic material so by comparing by knowing the order of these letters they know what's causing that you know cvrd in people okay so this is the practical use of this but for now we'll just keep it to the basics this is how dna is made hope this is clear to you so any other information that you may need so two strands you see here g here and another strand has c here they are connected through certain bonds that are chemical bonds these chemical bonds are called hydrogen bonds these chemical bonds are called hydrogen bonds the two bonds you see here so one bond is within the strand itself so you see the bond here so one nucleotide attached to another nucleotide through the the circles called phosphates so this is one bond you see this bond is called phosphodiester bond make a note of it i'll write it here phosphodiester bond so this bond you see here is called phosphodiester ester this is the main bond so what is it joining phosphodiester bond is joining nucleotides in one chain but there are two chains so two chains have to come together through another bond those bonds are hydrogen bonds those bonds are hydrogen bonds okay hope this is clear the vertical glue or joining is phosphodiester bond horizontal glue glue between the nucleotides from two opposite strands is called hydrogen bonds that's how they are put together that's how this whole molecule is made okay so this is about the structure of dna i'm going to briefly revise just to give you a more clearer picture about what we discussed because so far i added details if you have lost anywhere i'm going to briefly review about what we learned here okay if you have any difficulty in understanding anything here once i finish the review ask me question on that okay so if you get into the cell we have at the center we have nucleus inside the nucleus this is what what we learned inside the nucleus we have a thread of dna called chromatin at the basic level this thread is nothing but the double helical structure of dna correct what is the double helical structure of the dna made up of this double helical structure of the dna is made out of nucleotides 
okay so what is a nucleotide a nucleotide is a combination of three chemicals one is called base another one called sugar third one is called phosphate base sugar phosphate so this gives rise to what is called nucleotides as you see here base sugar phosphate gives rise to nucleotide like that many nucleotides like the beads in a necklace are joined to each other so here nucleotide is a bead they are joined to each other through what bond phosphodiester bond like that you synthesize one strand like this in this ladder similarly second strand is also made but they need to follow this base pairing rule so wherever g we have in one strand in the opposite strand should contain c wherever there is a t or a opposite strand should contain the either t or a so if there is a on one side you have t on the other side based on this base pairing rule the dna strands are synthesized all together this dna is made out of using only four different types of bases so by reading the information by reading the order of these bases we will figure out what protein is it making let's say in one human a particular type of protein is made another human a different or an abnormal protein is made you can read the dna sequence to figure out where this abnormality is coming from you will figure out what letter is gone wrong why this protein became something else okay for that we read dna sequences Okay, right. When you know, when you read about DNA sequences, you need to know that we are reading these letters, the order of these letters, because the order of the letters tell what sentence is it making up. It's like, as I was telling you, digest, digest with this, those letters gives rise to the meaning of digestion. But yeah, it gives rise to the meaning of certain protein, hence certain character. Okay, this is what we learned so far. Any doubts? Any questions so far? Anything that you didn't understand? Uh, sir, just a confusion. Go ahead. Uh, sir, in every human being, will there be the same sequence like G T G C, or can it be G A T G C? And good question. Yes, yes, we are going to slowly get there. This is uh, just okay. figuring out the very much basics. Okay. Our all our sequences are same. We are going to talk briefly about human genome project because nine point four we have genomic studies in them. So there we'll discuss a little bit more, but just to answer itself because it will take few more classes to get there. So our sequences more or less are same. Let's say uh, we actually I'll take one particular example of protein called hemoglobin. Okay, so hemoglobin is one very well known protein inside our body. So hemoglobin has to be coded by or from these instructions on our DNA. All of us will contain more or less same letters. making up that protein but some variation will be there only few regions here and there so mostly say let's say out of let's say 100 letters make up that particular gene let's say 99 of the amma say sometimes we have one or two small differences here and there so we have a whole chapter on genetic polymorphism gene markers this is where we'll get into these details where yes some people showing some difference in their dna sequences so they are polymorphic so they have different forms in their sequences we study humans based on these differences so simple answer here is more or less we have same sequences but rarely we do find some differences in our dna among each individuals okay, okay does it answer your question yes sir yes okay. any other questions before we get into more details okay good Right. now let's build a bigger picture about this let's build little bigger picture about this concept here okay so in the image you see it here we so far talked about cell inside the cell we have nucleus and inside the nucleus we have all our genetic material sometimes we refer it to as genome ohm means basically everything genome all genes all dna okay most of it is sitting in our nucleus most of this information is sitting in our nucleus but sometimes we also have information sitting inside our mitochondria so inside the nucleus this is what the nucleus right this is where most of the genetic information instructions to run whole body are sitting here but rarely we have some amount of information all the cells some amount of dna is also present in mitochondria that is our power houses of our cells so here we have some dna that is sitting there okay so very small though how small just to give you a connection but we get the details later 
our dna inside each of our cell contains 3 billion base pairs how many 3 billion so each cell if you count from the starting of the dna to the end of the dna there are 3 billion letters in it 3 billion nucleotides in it 3 billion letters or 3 billion nucleotides but in mitochondria there are very small amounts of dna in them in mitochondria we only have few thousands of this we have only few thousands of letters so it is not really huge it is a very very small amount of it so you see it inside the mitochondria this is all dna there are small loops of circular dna is present so some amount of dna present in mitochondria very small amount okay only few thousands of letters we only have about few thousands of letters in them okay accounting for very few genes only 37 genes only 37 genes are coded by mitochondria and approximately 30000 genes are coded by our nuclear dna so there are 30000 genes encoded by the instructions present in the nucleus whereas only around 30 37 are coded by the mitochondria so what are you learning here very very small amount of dna is present very small amount of genes are present i'll tell you the connection to genes in some time okay very small amount of genes are present here okay so few characteristics are controlled by this but nothing that we see outside nothing we see outside only maintaining the protein synthesis process energy generation process especially is controlled by mitochondria energy generation process okay for that they have very few genes why is that important there is something unique we need to know about mitochondria any idea where do we receive mitochondria from because all these genes in the nucleus we receive one copy from the father one copy from the mother okay we have two copies of every gene inside our body so one copy comes from father one copy comes from the mother is that the case with mitochondria do we have two copies of dna coming from one from father one from mother in mitochondria do you know anything about this any one of you if you know open your mic answer the question okay you can simply answer yes or no as well do you know if mitochondria contains copies from both father and mother this you study in science and technology there is some connection uh, in evolutionary studies and the importance of mitochondria in evolutionary studies here i'm assuming no correct okay yes, so mitochondria yes, only comes from the mother mitochondria is maternally inherited maternally meaning it is inherited only from the mother to the child have you heard about three parent baby this is defects inside the mitochondria inside the mitochondrial dna they take mitochondria from someone else not from the mother but some other lady some other healthy woman it is called third parent three parent baby father's dna mother's dna and mitochondrial dna coming from another woman that is why that baby who is born like that the controversial technique it is called three parent baby baby who has three parents dna from three people so that is because mitochondria comes from only mother if there is a defect in mother's mitochondrial dna we take mitochondrial dna of the mother out and instead take someone else mitochondrial dna as such it is it as far as our knowledge goes it doesn't contribute to any other features that we see outside some functional aspects inside the body is affected that is a very few and very rare diseases happen when something goes wrong with the dna inside the mitochondria okay right so this is about the mitochondrial dna just know that mitochondria is maternally inherited there is a very small amount of mitochondria why is it important we leave it now we'll come back to it mitochondrial dna is used in evolutionary studies to see the link the maternal side of the link who are they connected to we are we connected to africans americans by comparing our dna if you want to see the father side dna paternally inherited dna you go with the y chromosome dna which i will tell you in little later y chromosome x chromosome and y chromosome y chromosome is specific to males correct so if you want to cite the father side lineage you go with y chromosome dna 
If you want to study the mother side of the DNA, you go with mitochondrial DNA. Why don't we go with X chromosome? So if you are taking Y chromosomal information for studying males, why can't we study, why can't we extract information about females from X chromosomes? Can, can you answer this question? Sir, male cells have one X chromosome. Exactly, very good. So males also have X chromosome. So males and females both carry X chromosome. So you will not get information specific to females by knowing about X chromosome. It is mixed. So, but if you study about mitochondrial DNA, you will understand about the female inheritance pattern. If you study Y chromosome, you will study about the paternal or male inheritance pattern. Okay. So, this is all applied concepts built based on this basics. Okay. This is about the mitochondrial DNA and overall structure of the cell and DNA. We talked about so far briefly chromosome I, I talked I talk to you about. Okay. So chromosome, which is a condensed form of the cell, which is nothing but the DNA, but in a just different organization, that's it. Okay. So now let's connect this to a little bigger picture. Okay. So we talked about information stored in the nucleus. We talked about they are organized into chromosomes or chromatin type of material. And I also briefly told you about proteins. So let's make connections here, just a brief review on this. So we have instructions for everything that we know of. Like everything, for example, all the characteristics, okay? We have all this genetic information is stored into how many DNAs inside our cells? Do we have many DNA, DNAs, many different types of DNA or only one strand of DNA? Because so far we only focused on knowing the biological structure, okay? So how much DNA that we have inside our cells? In single cell, how many different DNAs we have? Do you know anything about it? Sure. How much, sorry? Two types. Two types. What are they? From mother, one DNA, and from father. Okay. So inheritance-wise, you're talking about one coming from mother, one coming from father. But okay. So two. That is why we have two, two strands, basically. Okay. Yes. We have each strand accounts for one particular, this chromosome. Like that, for every character, we have two copies like one chromosome from mother, one chromosome from father. There are two copies. But like that, how many such two copies we have? How many chromosomes we have? Basically, this is what I'm asking. How many chromosomes we have in each cell? We have 46 chromosomes. How many? Each human cell contains 46 chromosomes. Okay. Why 46? 23 from mother, 23 from father. So 23 plus 23. 46 chromosomes we have in each cell. Okay. All together, the letters I told you, number of 3 billion letters, they are combining all the letters from all 46 chromosomes. Not 46, but 23 chromosomes. Because another one is just a copy. Okay. Right. So on this DNA, if you have seen this, this portion of the DNA, we have this portion of the DNA, right? So let's say, let's say there is small part of the DNA, like few nucleotides like this. It's like a sentence. So if you consider this, this gives rise to, uh, this has instructions for making up a protein. If you pick one particular region on the DNA, let's say this region here, or this region I have highlighted here in the image that we are already talking about. So this region, if it is giving rise to proteins, so meaning if this structure gave rise to, if you see something here, this is a protein. Example, I gave you hemoglobin. I'm sure you all are familiar about hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein found inside our body whose job is to catch oxygen and take it to various parts of the body. When we inhale oxygen, which goes to the lungs. From lungs, it gets into the blood. So blood is carried by hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is like a transport system for oxygen. But hemoglobin is a protein. So how is hemoglobin made inside our body? It has to be made from instructions coming from our parents to us in the form of DNA. So meaning the instructions to make hemoglobin has to be present on the DNA. 
So on DNA, out of these 23 chromosomes, if you consider one copy, on one particular DNA, on one particular chromosome, we have information for making that protein. So instructions, let us to make up that protein. So that region on DNA is known as a gene. This is what is called a gene. So far we talked about chromosome, we talked about DNA. Now I'm adding the last piece, that is gene. So what is a gene? If you want to write down, genes contain instructions for making proteins. Genes contain instructions for making proteins. So what are the instructions? These letters, ATGCs, but the correct order of ATGCs. Let's say there is a G here, C here, A here, A here, A here. Let's say all these come together, provide instructions to make up hemoglobin. That region on the DNA is called gene for hemoglobin. Okay, so this is a hemoglobin protein and a gene coding for hemoglobin on the DNA. Okay, or the letters, nucleotides coding for hemoglobin is called gene for that hemoglobin. So what are genes? Genes are regions on the DNA which have information for protein which have code for proteins. So what are genes? Genes are these nucleotides, combinations of nucleotides that have information for making proteins. For hemoglobin, we need to have set of instructions on the DNA and this portion is called hemoglobin gene. Similarly, I told you about insulin before. I gave you insulin example. Insulin hormone example we talked about, right? Insulin is also a protein. Not everything inside our body is proteins, but many of them are proteins. Insulin is another example. So for insulin, where is insulin coming from? Insulin should also have instructions on the DNA like this. There must be a gene for insulin as well. So like that for all proteins inside our body, like hemoglobin, like insulin, antibodies. Antibodies are we make up against antigens, foreign pathogens. They are also proteins. We must have Genes for antibodies on our DNA. For our vision. For vision, we have some proteins present inside our eyes to, to trap light, to, to absorb the light. So those proteins are also made up of genes. So this information must be present on somewhere on the DNA out of these 23 chromosomes. Like that, there are many proteins whose instructions are present on DNA and these instructions are given from our mother, our parents to us both the parents to us. We are, our characteristics are combination of both of these genes. Okay. But whose gene gets expressed? Why brothers and sisters don't look the same? We'll talk about that in separate class in Mendelian inheritance. For now, this is like a molecular basis of inheritance. We just need to know that on DNA, there are regions on DNA called genes, each gene code for a specific protein. Okay, so what is the connection between DNA and genes? Can someone answer this question? What is the connection between DNA and genes from our discussion? Because it's a little complex concept. So what is a gene? How is it connected to DNA? Okay, I'll split this question into small questions. Where is genes? Where are genes present? Where are the DNA? on DNA, okay? So D, is DNA a small molecule or a big molecule? Long chain, sir. Correct, long project. chain, long chain. Let's say it's like a textbook, let's say. You have a textbook with paragraphs, okay? I'll give you this analogy for you to understand. Otherwise, it doesn't make too much of sense to you. So it's like a paragraph. Let's say all instructions are written in a book. Book is written in the form of paragraphs. So basically, if you count letter by letter, there are so many letters in each page, correct? And several letters are organized into a paragraph. Several letters are organized into a paragraph. Okay. They're organized into a paragraph, right? Each paragraph talks about something specific. That is how we organize the paragraphs. Let's say paragraphs talks about a gene, one paragraph talks about chromosomes. So paragraph, when you read the paragraph, it gives you some information. This information here is a protein. So we have letters written by using ATGCs, so many letters collectively, but they are divided into paragraphs. 
each paragraph gives you specific information. If let's say each paragraph is talking about a protein, the information coding for this protein is a gene. Meaning, if you consider this whole DNA as a textbook, there are regions. You can divide this DNA into a few regions. A region that is talking about hemoglobin is called hemoglobin gene. The region, that paragraph in the same book talking about insulin is insulin gene. Like that, on the same DNA, information can be divided into genes. So genes are nothing but portions on the DNA. But when do you call it a gene? Can you call entire DNA as a gene or multiple genes? You cannot call entire DNA as multiple genes because there may be gene present here, there may be gene present here. So in between we have gaps. So there are gaps in between, but genes are present like this. So genes are like paragraphs. Few let us put together, okay? So like that, genes are components of DNA and you define genes as those that code for proteins, meaning only when you read this paragraph, you will get the knowledge about hemoglobin. Only when you read about this paragraph, you get the knowledge about insulin. Like that, there are close to one lakh proteins made inside our body, made out of about 25, 30,000 genes. Where are these 30,000 genes present? 30,000 genes are distributed among different chapters. Like textbook is divided into different chapters. These genes are also divided into different chapters. Each chapter is a chromosome. Each chapter is a chromosome. Okay, understand my statements. I'm telling you there are multiple chapters in each book. And each chapter contain multiple paragraphs. So each paragraph is a gene. So one chapter contains few paragraphs, meaning few genes. Another chapter contains another gene. So this chapter is a chromosome. So how many chapters are there in this book? How many chapters are there in humans books? 46. 46, very good. We have 46 chapters because we have 46 chromosomes. But they are not written as a single book. The thing is, mother's DNA stays differently, father's DNA stays differently. They're not mixed up. It's like this. Father has written a book for you. Mother has written a book of instructions for you. There are two books. We are born with two books. Mother's book, father's book. They're not mixed together. They are separate. They exist as separate individual units. Okay, but they come together when characters have to express. So they, they stay together, but as individual components. That is why we have 46 chromosomes if you count both the copies. Otherwise, there are 23 chapters. Like that, mother book has 23 chapters, father book has 23 chapters. Mother gives us 23 chromosomes, father gives us 23 chromosomes. Together, we have 46 chromosomes. Inside, if you are reading one chromosome, you find a few paragraphs. A paragraph, each paragraph provides information for a particular protein. So that paragraph is called, how do you refer to paragraph here, based on our, our discussion? Paragraph is like a Chromosome, DNA, gene. Gene, gene, gene. Exactly. Gene. Each paragraph is like a gene. So on every chapter, huh, we see the DNA. So chromosome is nothing but DNA. If I say chromosome, if I say DNA, it is same. So each DNA or each chromosome is a chapter. In each chapter, we have paragraphs. These paragraphs are called genes. What do these paragraphs do? These paragraphs give information related to proteins. Okay. Using that paragraph, we create proteins inside our body. Like that, information is stored in the form of DNA. Inside our DNA, we have genes. Each gene codes for a protein. And together, maybe single protein or multiple proteins code for a character. Okay, Our hair color. Okay, It has to be made by certain protein. Eye color. Eye shape. Nose shape. So combinations of proteins come together. Those proteins are given by our parents to us in the form of instructions. That is how human bodies are made. That is how we look like our parents. Why? Because the characters came from them. Instructions came from them in the form of DNA and genes. Now, do you see the connections between chromosome, DNA and genes? So chromosomes yes, are the big, big structure. Okay. These uh, chromosomes are these. Condensed forms. In next class, the day after tomorrow, I will explain you about when are the structures made? Okay. So 
and uh, this is made up of a thread nothing but dna so chromosomes dna are different organizations of the same structure on the dna we have genes like that how many genes we have in human dna around 25000 to 30000 genes we have okay so this is a story this is the internal inside picture about the characteristics we simply call it molecular basis of our characters okay right this is the dna structure so we talked about so far cell cell components different cell organelles and their functions and we focused on nucleus inside the nucleus we talked about chromatin structure we talked about dna we also talked about the structure of the dna what is dna made out of what are nucleotides okay how are they connected to each other vertically through phosphodiester bond how are they connected to each other horizontally through hydrogen bonds these type of the questions i am going to ask you okay from running notes for now as i said for this unit you focus on running notes for additional information you read from the the unit the chapter i gave you i posted on the the course page okay we stop the class here for today so next class i am going to talk to you about cell division why cells have to divide how do they divide okay we are going to focus on that in the next class so next class i'll talk to you the most of the other concepts with the next class we can wind up these basics because they don't have too much of uh, focus in terms of exam so next class what i'm going to do i'm going to wind up these basics just knowing it and feel free you can ask me questions like where you have difficulty in understanding these things and uh, go through this handout i gave you okay so try to answer the questions we talked about today fundamental units of life what are the major components of cells okay genetic material levels of organization we talked about chromosomes dna genes is genes dna starting from the lowest to the highest genes dna chromosomes is a level of organization we talked about today in the class we learnt about dna structure we learnt about dna function what is a function genes present on the dna which code for proteins that is a function of dna carrying the genetic information and eventually giving rise to proteins did we learn about these terms today nucleotides we learn about nucleotides what is nucleotide made up of nitrogenous base sugar phosphate phosphate correct i have not talked to you about ends of dna i'll talk to you eventually on that today we have not discussed i briefly mentioned to you about rna but next class we'll talk about how is it different from dna and what are the different types of rna we talked about today only mrna messenger rna and also i briefly mentioned to you rna that makes up the ribosomes this is called rrna ribosomal rna we have not talked about trna that i'll talk to you in the next class did we talk about mitochondrial dna today briefly we went through what is mitochondrial yes, dna correct so just know that much yes, so next class we are going to focus on chromosome structure centromere different parts of chromosome what is cell division few aspects of cell division i have already given an outline for that give it a read if you don't understand that's all right and next class we'll talk about cell division in the part of cell division we'll talk about dna replication okay so these things we are going to discuss in the next class rna cell division dna replication this is already given in the outline and protein synthesis with that we'll finish unit 1.7 there are few more terms like mutations that i'm going to introduce so 1.7 is very brief right any any other questions so here i don't think you need to read any of these for now like uh, the main chapter i've given you is from stain and row this is a main chapter reference chapter we are using once you give it a quick read initially okay but i think we have to wait to finish the next class to understand most of it and i have also provided dna structure and function extra information if you read click on this and you will see it the, i have also provided video resources not for the topics we discussed today but for the next coming topics mitosis meiosis dna replication protein synthesis i have also given some you know uh, short videos 2 3 minutes videos this is to improvise your understanding because some of them you may lose the track you may not completely connect all the dots but don't worry i don't expect you to know everything from the first class itself but know the terms be familiar try to connect to the information that is coming in the other classes so with the help of this reading outline 
the chapter reading plus these videos, you should be able to understand the basics that we need for following the rest of the units in physical anthropology. Okay. So any other questions that you want to ask today? Any other questions that you could not understand today? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yash. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. Any anything that you found it difficult today, that where you need more help, you want me to revise or tell you something in the next class. Is it clear from what we discussed today? Yes, sir. I mean, Is the concept clear? Yes, sir. sir, actually, just uh, 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 learning the biology after ten years was somewhat complicated, but that's, go that's through, right. I will go through the video again. Yes, it is complicated. I only want you to know the pieces here, bits and pieces, DNA, chromosome, nucleotides. Just you are you are trying to frame the image. This is the beginning of this lecture, right? You are trying to frame the image. That is all right. So we to me also, it. it is something complicated to learn all those things. So is it okay to? Hmm. Uh, is it okay to make the notes by magap, sir? <laughs> magap. Uh, yes, like few things you have to remember. See, yes. mugging up means what? Connecting the dots. What do you have to mug up? You have to mug up what is a nucleotide. You have to mug up what is a chromosome. You have to mug up yes, what sir. is a gene. Yes. Sir. Those you have to mug up, but with connections. Mug up means you are you are saying you want to remember it. You have to remember it, but okay. don't remember them as a loose, you know, pieces, no, 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 puzzle no. pieces with connections. Yes, sir. Okay. So if you actually answer these questions that are given in the outline, then they should give you all the pieces. What is a cell? And what are the major components of the cell? What do they do? So, what are the functions of these? What is nucleus? What is gene, DNA, chromosomes? If you just make notes on these lines, that is sufficient. So, running notes you made in the process should be enough. Okay. Sir. Okay. Wherever you have a problem, as I said, I'll I'll tell you. This is not, you are not trying to answer any question on this. So, don't have to worry about remembering all of them in paragraphs. No, only terms. We are learning terms and connections. Fortunately, you don't have to answer them, but you know, next time when I talk to you about DNA, when I talk to you about chromosome, you need to have that imagination in your head going on. Okay, so you should not be lost. When I say chromosome, okay, chromosome is inside the nucleus. It is nothing but DNA. I want you to know that much. And when I talk about genes, I want you to know, oh, genes means a portion on the DNA, which code for proteins. I want you to know so much. Okay. That is the purpose of this, this chapter. Okay. So don't feel that it is too complicated it has in inherent complexity but this is how much you need to know from it okay, okay. next time onwards like after the next class next time we go with themes like cell division what is cell division how does it happen we'll talk about dna replication how does it happen protein synthesis how does it happen those three themes we are going to talk in the next class after that when we go with the chapter by chapter we identify questions when we talk about human genetics we'll say what is human genetics what do we study what are the different techniques in human genetics like twin studies what is twin study what is the principle of twin study how does it work what is a case study what is an example of study you can cite in the exam so there we focus in the exam point of view this is only merely for understanding the concepts forming the base and this is what i normally feel in the class students with only those who studied in high school level find it little difficult but with reading it again revising it you will you will be fine next class we will have a discussion on this. Okay. So next class to begin with, you ask me questions. So this is what I didn't understand. This is what I could not make connection. We figure it out and then we start with the next class. So you are clear about what we learned from it. Okay. okay. Also from the chapter, try to read some. This is also present in NCRT class 12th biology. NCRT class 12th, there is something called molecular basis of inheritance. You can also read it there, but it is more complex. That is why I didn't give mention it. But people who are comfortable with NCRT books, NCRT class 12th will talk about that. Okay. Otherwise, briefly go through the chapter I gave you, the material I gave you. You will understand a few things. They talk about nucleotides. Ignore the terms I have not talked about in the class. You don't need more specific terms. But DNA, RNA, DNA molecule structure, all these are given in the, the book I have given you. Okay. The chapter I have given. You. Okay. Just go through that part for now. Otherwise, we'll wait till the next class to understand them. Okay. If you don't have any questions, I close the class here. Any further questions? Yes, sir. Are you good? Yes, sir. 
right right guys thank you very much so we'll have a class on alternate day so friday evening at five o'clock we'll have another class we'll have a live session like this so first few sessions i'll go with this so we'll have interaction i'll see where you are how much are you absorbing based on that i'll define my speed okay but we'll have interaction you will ask me questions i'll clear things before moving ahead with the other topics okay and from you i'll expect you to read so outline your running note or now okay make sure to connect okay good luck okay. we'll see you in the thank next you, class thank, thank you sir, you, sir.